master of the people's mind, devotes his life to righting wrongs, protecting the innocent, and punishing the guilty. Using advanced methods that will ultimately become available to all law enforcement agencies, Cranston is known to the underworld as the shadow. Never seen, only heard, as haunting the superstitious minds as a ghost, as inevitable as a guilty conscience. The Shadow's true identity is known only to his constant friend and aide, Margot Lane. Today's story, aboard the steamship Amazon. Randy! Randall Todd! Uh, come on on over, Randy! Join the party! Hi, children! What's the celebration for? Jade's been lucky. She's in the money. She gets right on the ship's run for the day. Yeah, come on and join us. Can't let Jane take all that cash she wanted to rick a wonder when we docked tomorrow. Well, don't mind me. I just supply the money. What'll it be, Randy? Oh, nothing now, thanks. I'm looking for my stepmother. Anybody seen her? Oh, sure. She's over there with Dr. Fisk. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. See you later. Oh, say, we're going for a swim in the deck pool. Want to come along? Oh, not this afternoon, thanks. Oh, I don't think you like us. Hey, it'd be a lot of fun, though, wouldn't it? Hello, Mother. Afternoon, Davisa. Oh, Sit down, Randall. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Mother. Well, tomorrow we'll be in Rickaguan. There on, it's going to be one great big party. Lower your voice, my son. Oh, no one can hear us in this corner. Time for the hush hush is almost over. Well, it, it, it will be short. Well, I hope your little revolution is half as much fun as smuggling those munitions out of the United States has been. It will be more exciting, I assure you. When the revolution is successful, you will be a hero, Todd. Hold up. Oh, nothing. Randy, I believe you are quite. 
frightened. You in danger. Margo, what would you do if... No, I can't tell him. Tell him what? Oh, please, leave me alone, Margo. Randy. Stop pestering me, will you? I, I can't stand it. Randy, come back here. Randy. <laughs> Shadow. Yes, Margo. You heard everything? Yes, I was here beside you. Randolph Todd must have some cause for his fear. I think I must talk to that young man. Talk to him soon. And the Shadow. Well, now, sir, I don't know that. Of course you will, Mr. 
start playing a joke on the young lady, we must let him. No one will know you let us in. Oh, thank you, sir. Of course, it's all in fun, sir. Oh, it's dark. Randy, where are you? There's a light switch by the door, sir. Oh, yes. There we are. Your mom. He isn't here. Oh, yes, he is, sir. Look, he's lying on the floor. Yes, oh. come on, Randy, wake up. Oh! Your mom. Young friend was bored in life. He was ill and depressed when we left him before this. Day. Exactly, Dr. Davisco. I had the ship's doctor check the fingerprints on that knife. They all belong to the dead man. No one else had touched it. If only he'd come to me. You must not reproach yourself, my yes. Captain. Yes, Miss Cranston. I met young Todd this afternoon. He seemed worried about something. Yes, I too noticed that he was troubled. The question is, Dr. Davisco, what was he worried about? Who knows? He was a moody youth. Yes, poor boy will never know his reason. Captain. Todd had a radiogram this afternoon. It's missing now. Uh, Randolph received many messages, Captain McKee, concerning the estate. Did he show you this one, Mrs. Todd? I, I never interfered with his affairs. We're wasting time, Cranston. I think not, Captain. This message may have been important. Thank you, Ed. Did you see it? I'll ask the question, Mrs. Cranston. Very well. Uh, you might ask Mr. Cranston how he knows the radiogram is missing. Yes. How about that, Cranston? Uh, Todd was wearing the same suit, and I found it, so I looked for it. You mean you searched the body? Yes. Stewart was here as a witness. Well, I must say you've got your nerve, Cranston. Perhaps the suicide with a knife isn't very common, Captain. Now, look here, Cranston. It's bad enough to have a suicide on board without you trying to twist it into something worse. No one saw young Todd after his three traveling companions left him. I resent that. Captain McKee, this is outrageous. Must we be badgered by this young man? I can't stand his manner. <laughs> And Nelly. I've had more than enough of your impudence. Adam, take this, this Mr. Cranston, to his stateroom and lock him up. Lock me up? Yes, I am holding you as a material witness. Oh, that's ridiculous. And Adam, How are you today? Having too much fun. I'm good. I'm good. I slept. I I slept through last night. I was gonna stream and then I uh, slept, and uh, I was uh, could could have uh, streamed and then I didn't. So I woke up and I streamed, and I feel good. And I'm glad you're feeling better. And nice. <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah. I woke up at four and then I stayed up till around five. Oh man, you having that coffee cake? You got stuff to do. You're like, um, oh, num num num. <clears throat> Sounds delicious. I do love those coffee cakes. Sounds delicious, uh, delicioso. Well, so far it's going like this. So we're getting it done. What is? Nobody at the door. No one? Possibly 
We're getting it done slowly. It's coming in. You're going to be there when it gets done. Yeah. Shailene, man. Making this chain mail look nice. Oh, yeah. What's your plans for today? No, 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 true. Tongue to a talk with shadow. No, no, ma'am. Just, just shadow. I don't believe it. It's true, mister. Shadow, take radiogram from tongue to it. The radiogram. You have it to him? You cow. Cannot fight shadow. Cannot see. Fool. There is the answer to not seeing him. He hid in the fog. No fog in tongue to a cabin. Well, he won't mind this fog a little later tonight. Whoa. Well, hopefully I can give you a little bit of support till uh till I have to go to work. I got I got to go to work at around I gotta go to work at around 1.30, so we've got some time hanging out. I know, I got work. I know, it's so sad. So what's the uh, what's the university about? What's uh, what you, if I may ask, what you uh, what's the work you got? What you learning about? What what's this learning I've heard so much about? Oh, goodness gracious. So you're learning about the the photo shop. Oh, uh, but for English class? They have the tech class. Yeah, for tech class. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So you're learning that that Photoshop. Oh, goodness. Go learn that that tech. They're like, you need to learn that Photoshop. Quiet, 
Mr. Flash, Peters? Yes, Captain. Find the light switch. If you ask me, this is the crazy. Hey, who turned on those lights? Do not move, Captain. Got a gun, sir. So I see. So is the woman. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Mr. Todd and Mrs. Oh, my goodness. Resizing it and literally keeping its resolution. Well, you know about DPI and whatnot. Not much. Oh, okay. So, do you know about DPI? Let me let me just hold up. Let's get to that. Let's just do that. Let's get to this. Let's turn it on to music, and we can learn about DPI. So. DPI is dots per inch. That's uh, basically what... Okay. That's okay. That's all good. That's why you have a goat here. So DPI is dots per inch. And keeping resolution size is how many, uh, how many pixels are in an inch. Like, so, let's say my DPI is 12,000. That's how many pixels are in an inch. That means that how, how much I can do this before you see all those pixels. You see what I mean? So how many times can you go can you uh get closer and closer and closer? So dots per inch is very uh easy to understand, but it's it it'll take a bit to master. So dots per inch is when you're changing image sizes is very important because when you blow up an in, uh, an image you're gonna start to see crust which is what I call it uh, you're gonna see all those random all those little things that make up a pixel like what if I blew this up a lot of times depending on the um, on what you're working with, It'll keep these little pixels that you use to make lines. So dots per inch is, is kind of basically in the image resolution and stuff like that. So you can use dots per inch, dots per centimeter, and all that other stuff to get what you're trying to do. Any other questions? As someone who is learning uh, Photoshop, I had to learn by myself, so I'm trying to help as much as I can. Yep. So you don't want to have crust in an image when you're. Um, that's what I call it. It's not a. It's not an actual term, but it's easy to uh, understand. So like this, 
definitely has some original crust, but when I rescale it, now look at that. Doesn't look half bad. So remember, scaling and changing the size of an image, putting it in the right place, can change it from being, oh, that's okay, to, oh, look at that, that's some good chain mail. So remember, you can use image resolution because there's things that people won't see. Like, things that just look good. And one thing I'm going to have to do is tighten this up. So I'm tightening this, tightening this up because my eye keeps drawing to it. It's right here. So I'm going to add a little bit of... Yeah, see? Your eye doesn't draw directly to it. All right. Let's get to it, to it, to it. So, yeah. Remember, there's simple steps that you can use. Because the human eye is not perfect. It's going to make mistakes. And you're using those mistakes to hide yours. Or to n do l uh, less work so you aren't stuck on a project for too long. Oh, yeah. Belts are good. Yeah. Yeah, we... I'm a fan of making sure that belts look good. You want them to look like 3D objects on a 2D image. It's fun. Now... Let's b -b 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 paste, paste. Sometimes it'll paste. Certain uh, certain programs paste in the original pl place it was copied from. So a lot of times, if you paste it up here, change the image resolution, and put it down here. It'll just keep pasting in the same place. So if you want to not do that, you can just copy it when you put it down here. So it'll copy where, uh, the exact place where it was. And there we go. Trying to change the image size a little bit more. Just it's light little details like this you gotta watch out for. And then I'm rather proud. Oh yeah. But you'll get the hang of it. I believe in you. Because Goat's that kind of guy. And deselect.
Now, I am going to say this. I'm not doing this for the whole comic. This would be the biggest pain in the ass ever. You know what? I say that, but I don't know. You never know. I might get so fast at it, I'll just be pop, 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 pop. Let's change. But you know you can ask me anything if you want, Nalik i I'm always trying to help everybody. I always want to give everybody uh, uh, something, you know. But you learn an English education and whatnot. That's so cool, you know. Aw, thank you. You're pretty cool, too. But English education is a, is is very sweet, very selfless. That's very nice of you, Nally. Have you, as you have been hearing my voice, uh, you have probably heard. Uh, you know, I I know English. I'm no master at it. So what uh what grade are you feeling that you might be uh educating? Oh yeah, it's very difficult. Oh, nice, nice. So you're going to be you're going to be one of those teachers that, you know, learns a lot. Community college, you know, helping people get ready for the rest of their lives. Law and everything, you know, uses uh, uses very flowy language and whatnot in certain parts. And also it uses very esoteric language, I think is the word for it. So teaching people proper English and whatnot, it's a very noble cause. Thinking of others before yourself. Aw, that's sweet. That's so sweet of you. My goodness, Nally. The more I learn, the more I say you are a sweetheart. My goodness. Oh, goodness.
My goodness. So what are some classics that you would be teaching the uh, the uh, the next generation? What are some of the literary classics or are the new classic any new classics that you feel like the next generation needs to read about? Or are you in the middle of stuff and you're just chilling out? If you're just chilling out, Nally, just, it's a okay. You can chill out with me and that's all good. I would understand. You got 12 hours of work to do. And you're like, good, I, I got stuff to do. Can't talk to my friends all the time. It's okay. It's okay. I won't bother you. Ah. Oh. Now that's lovely. I've never read Crawdad Singh, but Racing in the Rain, The Art of Racing in the Rain. Mm. Mm. My goodness. Now, I would be terrible, and I would, uh, I would try to insert a lot of, a lot of imagination into it. So, uh, The Spear is one of my, uh, is a great, It's a great sci-fi book. I would try to show them that because I think that that's a perfect for that grade. And then I would bring out old mystery novels, old uh, magazine mystery magazines and whatnot from the nineteen twenties. Uh, Lord of the Rings would be a great one. 1937, a classic. Or is that The Hobbit? I think that's The Hobbit, and then 19-something is The Lord of the Rings. But, classic. Octavia Butler, not bad. Red Rising, not bad. And The Name of the Wind I have never heard of, but that doesn't mean that it's not a good choice. You seem to love literature, the English language, the beauty of the English language. Oh, yeah, I love... Do I love Tolkien? I don't know now. I don't know now. I don't know if I love Tolkien. I don't know. Uh. Mm. 
Oh, goodness. You know, I, I love... And that's why I put up that uh, HP Lovecraft uh, time suck. Because I'm very interested in American literature like that. You know. The idea of impending horror... Yep. Yes, he is. You betcha. And I, I uh, listened to a podcast all about him. And I have to say, woo, crazy. But he had so much tragedy in his family and he suffered his whole entire life. His father, when he was born, had a form of syphilis, a the bad kind of syphilis that uh, ruined his mind. His grandfather died when he was 13. His grandmother died when he was 8. His mother was slowly... Also going through mental problems. And he was, uh, he wasn't, I wouldn't say fragile. What, what's the word? He was, he had high anxiety. He was very anxious. And I don't think his family helped out that much with his anxieties. In fact, I think they exasperated all of them. But, without him, classic horror, as we know it, would not be where it is today. I would say he's not a, a not kind of a genius. I would say he was a genius. The man uh, had a small little newspaper uh, dedicated to astronomy in his small town. Like the man, and clearly he knew what he was talking about. But just so much tragedy in his life morphed it. You know, madness took over, as they say. Now, I would say that would be a great, like, story to really capture people is the Call of Cthulhu short story would be a great like oh hey what's uh what's this guy do oh yeah no it's uh it's it's nightmares teaching kids and then uh what is that guy's name uh Douglas I think it is it Douglas? Am I getting that right? Maybe I'm getting that wrong. Uh, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. That would be a great that would be a great, like, young adult thing to learn. Uh, that would be an amazing one. 
I remember I read that for high school, and I was I was told by my my uh, English teacher uh, that's great, but uh, I think that you can you know actually do a little bit better. And I was like, okay, but I like it. Douglas Adams, I think his name is. Oh. It's very nihilistic. It's the view it's the same view of the universe I feel as HP Lovecraft. But instead of HP Lovecraft where in the rest of the universe it's the idea that there is no human emotion. H.P. Lovecraft was very... There is not human emotion in the universe. And it, it's scary. Where in Douglas Adams, he's stating... Oh, there's way more human emotion out there than anything else. It's almost uh, completely filled with this so-called human emotion. And everything has it. And... It doesn't matter. Who cares? Everything has this hu these human emotions. And the universe doesn't care. And it moves on. It's such a... It's such a fun jump into that. Lord of the Fry. Lots of Edgar Allan Poe. The Great Gatsby. A kill... Ah, oh, yeah, To Kill a Mockingbird. I failed every single test on that, uh, that book, and I read it completely. Because the teacher didn't ask actual fucking questions. She was using it as a way to be like, oh, what is... What's the meaning of the story? What's, uh, what about the details for all the characters and stuff like that? You have to remember all these little details. Because the writer is, well, what do they represent? Why is this character wearing this scarf and whatnot? And I'm like, I don't know. It's kind of chilly out. Like, what do you, what do you want me to say? <laughs> Why does it why does the character bring up uh this situation and all that? Yeah. And I failed every single test on that. On to kill a mockingbird. Oh well. I thought I did good. But she didn't think so, so oh well. Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't know. A ask somebody else. I don't. I don't know why. Why does it matter? And I guess in old Eng older English and stuff like that, it really does matter. But nowadays, we don't really do that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there are a lot of books that still do that. There is, um, oh man, maybe a great book would be, uh, The House of Leaves. I think that's what it's called. The horror novel House of Leaves, or I forget the full name of it. All right. Now we clean up the colors. All right. Yeah, uh, it's a horror novel. 
And it's about... Uh, let me think how... So the story goes where literally the characters find this guy that's dead in his apartment. Yeah, uh, this guy is dead in his apartment. They find his body and he goes in there and then they start trying to trap a, uh, the guy that's investigating is trying to trap a smell, which is a lot like how, uh, Call of Cthulhu starts where literally you're learning the story through someone else's perspective of the story. And you learn about a videotape um, about how this house, this this family, this other guy that he's trying to investigate is investigating a family that they have home videotapes that literally they shouldn't exist. Of like, they're so old, they're made in the 1992 or 93 when it was very difficult to get CGI or anything like that to actually make this, you know, work. And it was in these home movies and slowly you learn about like what's going on. And it's kind of a Call of Cthulhu book. It's, I could, I only got to, um, I only got about a quarter way in before I was like, this book's too big. My brain shut off now. Yeah, it's it's good. I'm not going to say it's not. I just have other things to do. If I gave it the full time, I think it would Oh yeah, you read it. What's it? Oh, yeah. I think it would be a great, like, thing to teach people because it's it's modern literature. But it's... Uh, I don't know. Would they allow that in class? I would enjoy it if I was young. And then see the the differences in writing style of directors and how to make a movie and stuff like that. Because it's got... It has four different movies. Probably not. No... One scene, come on, school board, come on. It's just one harmless little scene. What could happen? I mean, they are high school kids. What, uh, what... Which scene in particular? Oh, are you talking about the orgy? Is that what you're talking about? The thing that never translates well? That even uh, in its time didn't translate well and still doesn't? And still confuses people and it's just like, oh, okay. As I remember in one of the reviews of the book, the original review of uh, the book, it was uh, grotesque, grotesquely unnecessary for a literary master as Stephen King. But maybe that was the point? 
I don't know what his wife thought about that. Because I'm pretty sure they were, they've been married for years. Like, I don't think they had a divorce, so... Yeah, that would uh, that would be great if your husband just uh, came out with a literary, considered the literary Bible at the at the time, and then the reviews came in, and you're reading the reviews, and then you find out a what? Wait, what? What are they talk, uh, Stephen? What are they talking about at this part? What are they? Uh, what What are they talking about? I, uh, I don't actually know. Um, uh, they just don't seem to have our sensibilities. <laughs> uh, are you sure? It, they, it seems like it's come up in more than one review. I, I just want to see what's going on. Because I remember there was, there's been lots of reviews of Stephen King in the back, back in that age. I remember the one review, which was uh, very hilarious, uh, was uh, Stephen King's The Shining when it was being adapted to movie and he was kicked off the project. And it was a review right after it. And it's, and it's so obvious that it bothers him. And he's trying to keep it in. And it's... To me, it makes me laugh every time. <laughs> yeah. Because, uh... Because the uh, movie director was, uh... Like, I, I know how to make movies. And literally every day, he was, uh... He was given changes that need to happen to the movie and he would toss them into the garbage. Stephen King would send him uh, a note a day as it, as they said and um, the great director, I forget his name off the top of my head, uh, literally tossed them into the garbage. And then when he came over to uh, see halfway through the project, uh, literally Stephen King got uh, got hung up on the color of the beetle that uh, that the family was driving in. So the director literally changed the color of the beetle just to be a dickhole. It's. Great. It's such a petty, like, art, two artists coming together and hating each other's guts. It's incredible. But I'm going to tell you right now, I don't think my book my comic book is ever going to be shown in a, uh, in a, uh, school. That is for sure. And I'm expecting that. But, but, okay, all right, fair enough. Lots of books aren't shown in a book in schools, and especially comic books are not shown in schools because they don't care, and they a lot of times they're supposed to be edgy and whatnot. And I'll just. I'll just let you know what what's going to be shown. Uh, there's going to be some hanging bodies in this comic. Like, it might be almost TOS. 
might make uh, the Twitch man, uh, the Twitch people angry as they were. Might not be the nicest thing that they see. Oh, well, it does, it does help people create imagination and whatnot. What did I do? What did I do? That's okay. Trying to get this taken care of, Jesus. Nope, nope, nope. All right, all right, all right. That's okay, that's all good. That's okay, that's okay, because you know what I can do? Now, like you, this is, this is going to be a, it's going to be a high level move over here. High level move over here. And then cut. Deselect. Okay. All right. Paste. All right, there we go. And merge with layer below. There we go. See, high level move right there. Big brain move. And some need the visual stimulation of seeing a picture to make sense of the scene. Exactly. Some people cannot imagine. Or they can imagine. And it's just. It does make it a little bit easier. But. I would say modern comic books are not. Not that good. Well indie comics are very good. Manga is very good. Hey -o. Haven MCQ. Hey -o. How you doing? Having too much fun? Having too excited? Hope you enjoy. I do actually hope you enjoy. I appreciate it. I appreciate you coming in and saying hey. We're just chilling. Now, like, he's working on stuff. I'm working on stuff before I have to go to work. So, you know, too much fun. Uh, I am grand. I have to go to work in just a bit, but I am good. I still have 30 more, 30 to an... 40 minutes left. I got a bit left. It'll be all good. Hmm, wait a second. Hmm, that's fine. That's fine. 
I like it. Just to be different. Oh yeah, everything's going good. I'm trying to finish this up right now. So, you know, too exciting. So far, I have this. So, you know, having too much fun. Cool, cool, I'm not long home from work. Okay, all right. Well, thank you for coming in, Heaven. We do appreciate it. I appreciate it. I don't know about everybody else, but I appreciate it. You know, I'm... I'm always appreciative... So you you enjoy your time. Ah, oh, thank you so much. Now, I could do what I usually do, but I'm not going to do that right now because it's... Actually, I might do that in just a second. I was thinking about it, and then I'm like, you know what? I'm going to rethink it. I'm going to thunk it. And then those memories. But yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Get some comic books in high school. We'll see if it works. Uh, what is it? Yeah, I knew the command. Yeah, I know my commands. Nice. Uh, I've only read Saga, Romantically Apocalyptic, the Klonoa comic, and some DC comics. Hey, it's okay. It's okay. I would say manga might be a good jump into it. Uh, I don't think it's great literary works, though. Batman, uh, a lot of great Batman comics because it makes you think. Uh, what's a good... Uh, uh, I mean, I'm not much for recommending good comic books. Look, for the longest time I was reading some uh, Sonic comics. So, you know... Not the great literary mastery as you would expect. But it did help me uh, gain a style. 
I would say. It really did help me gain my style of drawing. That and manga gave me the... How to do eyes and... You know. Well, manga taught me how to do bodies. Let's clean that up. Clean that up. Probably because it's human and I'm mostly... Not a few anime is super hand. hard to draw for me, and for some reason, no idea why. Uh, human anatomy is very difficult for a lot of people. It's not easy, and it, and I'm not gonna try to lie to people being like, oh yeah, it's the easiest thing to do. No. It's difficult, and that's why I like it. It's not easy. But it, but once you get anatomy down, you can do so many amazing things with it. You can really change it up, really change um, a lot of what you want to do. You can show a scene more accurately, I would say. Is a great way to put, like, why I love anatomy so much. Because anatomy and perspective is something that you need to learn to become a better artist. Remember, perspective is used in almost everything. Even, you know, this is uh, using perspective. It's using... Uh, a form of perspective to you draw your eye in to see that it's a 3D to believe it's a 3D object. Oh my god, I did it. I did it. Oops, I did it again. <laughs> All right. And expand selected area, bam, and then, okay, okay, go on, go on, go here, and hit there, and then deselect. I just want to make sure that I have not, yep, yeah, I did it right, I did it right. Uh, man. No. You select. All right. Uh, and expand select area, bam, and then. There we go. Deselect. <sighs> mm. But I can't wait till I see uh till you get uh better at art. I can't wait to see some of your art and I can't wait to see uh, do you have any writings or anything like that? I would love to uh, to read some of your work. I love... Uh, or is that not yet? And if it's not yet, that's totally fine. If you're like, I'll, I'll show you later. Mm. 
right here. There it is. I found you, you little bugger. Deselect. What? Undo. So much fun. I can show sections because I work by jumping around rather than chronologically. I know most of my works are currently three, 300 pages plus. My fantasy novel is probably going to be 700 pages minimum. Well, surprise, surprise. That's what I'm thinking for my manga is... Uh, no, I don't think it's going to be 700 pages it might be more. It might be thousands of pages. This is... It would be thousands and thousands of pages of action, adventure, fun stuff. Oh, it'll be so awesome. To say goodbye. Like, that's what I'm expecting to do. Is literally uh, keep making this for years. Kind of like uh, the person that's doing One Piece, like doing it for so long and uh, because he's not because he's getting money for it. Hell, he could be doing he could be uh, on the side of the road. I would love to make money for it as I would love to get paid to do this. Expanded selected area. And then go to this. But that's what I want to do. Massalada! That's fine. No, Matsalatov, you're fine. What? Matsalatov, you're okay. I don't think anybody was uh, angry at you. We're, me me and Nally are, are just chilling out. We're fine. We, uh, we weren't bothered. Thank you for coming in uh, for even a little bit. I appreciate it. Sorry for, for bringing you into this, uh, Nally. Just throwing you under the bus. Just being like, ah. I know. It's, it's concerning, I know. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Goodness gracious. But 700 pages, ugh, I, I need to read it. What, uh, what's the, um, if you had to write a synopsis, what would it, what would it include? What would it entail? Hey, it can be just one sentence, you don't have to write... 
I'll read it. You can, hell, you can even put it on the Discord if you want. I would not mind. But also, I hope their concert went well. Masaladov. And I do hope their concert went well. I hope you enjoyed it. Let's see. Any more belts? Any more belts I see? No. No more belts. Went wonderful, quite an active chat and all. Oh, that's sweet. That's lovely. An active chat. That's so lovely. Those chat that chat is so nice. Sounds lovely. What was the uh what was the concert? What uh were they singing? Were they playing? Why am I doing this? This is unnecessary. Let me see. Where is it? Right there. I see you. I see you. I mean, if you just want to drop it in the Discord, I'm fine with that. What, what, what? Because I'm real excited about it. I love, I love getting into other people's stuff. I love getting into other people's stuff that they've put passion behind. And 700 pages is a lot of work. Oh, goodness. It was an EDM type thing. All I know is he was playing music while wearing his fursuit head. Aww. Aww. A witch prince destined for the throne is rejected from his realm because its powers did not awaken. So he escaped the outer realm to live alongside humans, a race he had never encountered in the flesh prior. And in the outer realm, despite everything, is where he ventures to find his awakening. Oh. Oh, goodness. You can post it on the Discord. I'd love to see it. Love to see it. Massalatov, my goodness, this prince sounds uh, sounds interesting. This prince, he, <laughs> it's okay, it's all right. We're all learning. Hey, my hands aren't perfect either. Massalatov. You're good. You're okay. We're all learning. We're all excited to see it, too. Now, this prince sounds like an interesting character. So they're learning, so learning about humans. So is the prince an elf or is it a race that you've already made up? Like, what's up?
Bam, bam. I wasn't expecting perfection. Perfection is in the eye of the beholder. Chinabin and gave the hat more detail. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. My goodness. Now remember. Now remember your proportions. On the head. Now I love that chin. It's definitely a good chin. That's a good chin. Remember your proportions. Remember the cheekbone. Never forget the cheekbone exists. Remember how that uh, how that goes with the eyebrow above it. You don't have to define it. I just want you to be aware of it. Remember the eyes. Now the eyes might need adjusting, but that hat. Is a gorgeous hat. That's one ballin' hat. So witches are one of the first second generation races that are made the branch off from river elves and can control elemental magics like elixir making via water and earth focus. That has super pretty. Yeah, it's such a good hat. Very good. I it feels three-dimensional. Which is very good. Which I th I'm, I'm thinking that's what you're trying to get at. Now you might need to redo the brooch. There. Remember the uh, how her body is uh, going forward, and notice how the body is moving in a certain direction. Remember how the neck, the neck is kind of looks. Uh, Kind of looks like you're, she's twisting her neck, which is very weird. But other than that, I think you're doing well. You're learning. You're learning from your mistakes, and it's getting better. Yeah, exactly. That Remember the greatest... Remember the greatest little mannequin or a little uh, anatomy book you'll ever have is right here. It's your own little meat sack. Use it as a reference point to remember. You can use it for male, female, uh, children. Remember using yourself as a good anatomy check to see where everything is. Now, my favorite explanation of this is using the statues of Michelangelo. The statues of Michelangelo, which I'll just... I'll just put in my Discord as an easy way for everybody. Statues... Yes. Uh, it's in neat stuff I found. I'll put it in there. So Michelangelo used male bodies at the time as a reference, and it obviously shows. 
It's very sad because he's a very good artist. But it's kind of funny. So he used male bodies to try to show the female form. Why am I doing this? I don't have to do this. I am deciding to do this the wrong way. I keep doing this. It's okay. We're learning. More like I already know, and I'm intentionally not doing the right thing. So they're the second generation. They're river elves. Okay. And then they meet humans, and then they're like, oh shit. Humans. What am I going to do about this? There we go. That's good. Culture has poems. I it's not a lot. That's actually very good. Hell, I I'm explaining to one of my editor my editor uh like the history of the country and he's like, okay, what's all the uh I need because he wanted to he's writing music for me. And I, I'm like, okay, do you want the... I, I gave him a brief synopsis of, uh, of the history of the uh, country. And he's like, no, 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 I need the actual war before the country was formed. And I'm like, oh, okay. And it's just paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs of gosh darn, uh, like an actual flipping war. And... I'm like, there you go, buddy. Like, your world building is fun. World building... World building is exciting. And adding a bit of poetry gives more validity... Uh, solidifies that idea. My goodness, I didn't know I had a experienced writer in the chat. I didn't think I had a writer in the chat, just, you know... But yeah, Michelangelo statues, just remember that using your own anatomy can hinder you. And using the anatomy of just one gender is, uh, you know, can look a bit off. And everybody knows. But during that time, like, he has a excuse, you know... There's Dark Elves in my novel that are called Hilothians, and I've created an entire language for them, and another race called Eshin that are an entirely new race that I can't really describe other than Vampiric Vikings, and I made an entire language for them too. I'm an extra with this kind of stuff. Well, you could describe them... You just don't want to uh, fill up my chat with uh, with descriptions of your races, which is fine. Oh, I males are way easier for me to draw than females. 
I say as I draw exclusively females these days. But it's because it's so easy to draw a male for me. It's like, it's, it's very easy for me to draw males. When females are so much uh, more difficult. They have such little, little angles that I love to just get into and stuff like that. Mhm. Mm hmm. I mean, for me, I literally just look down at myself and I'm like, "Oh, okay. There we go. That's how that's how ma masculine bodies look and stuff like that." I mean, everybody has their own opinion. I mean, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. If you, if you think it's easier. Aww. I do, too. I see fat, too. Don't you worry, I got a pudge as well. I got that bod... You know, ladies are into that bod, you know, a little bit of pudge, you know, where it it's comfortable, you know. Just remember that there's a lot of anatomy books out there for men and women, so don't feel like you're... You have to pigeonhole yourself. I mean, if you want that fin boy body, you, I mean, it's very difficult. It's difficult, mass a lot of. I know, I know. I get, I understood. Aww, what, what? What's your height? What's your, uh, if I may be so bold to ask, what's your height? You might not be that, that... Hi, let's see. Five foot four? You want to be a short stack? You want to you wanna be a short stack over here? Okay. That's what you're into. That's what you're into. I'm not going to stop you. I'm just going to... I'm just going to look at you and be like, you, you want to be shorter? That's a dream right there. Everyone around me is five, five foot and under. I feel like a giant. Oh, it's okay. You'll, it'll be okay. We're all, sometimes you just grow into the right height. I'm five foot nine. So I am a giant to you. Don't worry if I if I if we ever meet up if I meet up with everybody I'm a I, you'll see a giant over here
It'd be like, he's so big. My heart, please. Five foot nine's a great height. I'm five foot nine. Don't, <laughs> don't at me like that. I'm a great five foot nine. Uh, my dad's five foot nine. Lots of people I know are five foot nine. Be giants. I, I get it. You want to be that cute little smallness. But sometimes life doesn't work like that. Oh my goodness. You small people. My brother is like six foot two. My sister is five foot eight. You small, small people. They feel like a giant. I'm normally the smallest over here. Yeah, six foot two. What's up? What of it? His wife's like, I think five foot. Five foot six, I think she is. It's so tall. I want the ground. I can hide in more space. <laughs> That's fine. No, I know a girl who's uh who's a giant. She's six foot uh she's six foot four. Uh I know her she's a good friend of mine. There are advantages to being small. Yeah. Also, uh, Elma is uh, six foot, uh, six foot eight. So uh, the main character is a tall lady. So, you know, she's taller than most men. These small, small people. They are like ants to me. <laughs> I love her. Yeah. Well... Hey, if you like the flat chest, you like the flat chest. I'm not gonna say no to it. I'm gonna say I'm gonna tell you right now, though. You're not gonna see it a lot. You're not gonna see it a lot in my comics. So I mean, I apologize. I don't apologize. You're just gonna have to accept that most of the girls in my comic are uh, are more than a B cup. It starts at C and goes all the way to G. <laughs> what? What was that? What a, what button did I hit? What what button did I hit? 
What did I do? What did I do? Remember to save. Don't forget to save, especially when you hit random buttons that you shouldn't. I mean, Busty or Flat, I love them all. Just prefer flat ones, and yeah, no hate on say sizes. I wish I could draw a cup size on me. I'm just so skinny. It's okay. It's okay. I like them. I like them all. I just, lately, lots of comic book artists lately have been pushed to draw women with smaller chest, make them more masculine, or make uh, female characters look way more, um, look more like men and give that, uh, kind of androgynous look. And I'm kind of going the opposite way intentionally. Oh, man. Oof. 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 No, no. L'Oreal, get away. Get away, L'Oreal. L'Oreal, get away. Go away. Come again another day. We'll talk about that later. Uh, I need to gain 30 pounds of healthy weight. Oh, God. I'm at a healthy weight. I'm not fat. I'm just... I'm pudge. I got a little pudge right here. I could lo I could stand to lose it. I'm at a healthy weight. I can really uh, stand to lose it. But it's all good. It's all good. We're all working towards something, you know? takes time, nobody's perfect, and if you feel like you're a bit fatter than you want to be, that's okay, what, you work on it, you, you take time, you know, you, you try to, to get it down, uh, to healthier weight, or gain weight to be at a healthy weight, <laughs> oh goodness, yeah, Pudge can be cute. I like Pudge. I like skinny girls. I like chunky girls. I like all girls. I like all the ladies. I like every lady in the world. Ha <laughs> ha. Better ba ba ba. Yeah. Pudge is cute. But. It's about to be that time again, and this time I'm going to do it correctly this time. I'm not going to fuck up like I did yesterday. <laughs> so far we got, we're doing some cleanup. Yeah, Nally, you saw, you did, I, I don't know what happened. Uh, their names are exactly the same. That's what happened. I know what happened. Uh, I say I don't know what happened, but their s names are exactly the same. There's nothing I could have done. But I gotta get ready to go to work. Yeah. We'll send them to G-Rag. G-Rag. Yeah, we got, we got a lot of stuff done. Yeah, that's that's her color. Her color is blue and uh the metal is a deep blue. So that's why I'm coloring her blue. She her scale color is blue and her uh and the metal color is blue as well. So yeah. That's why she's a blue scale. She's a blue scale. She a half dragon. Nope. No. 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 I can hear myself. No, you're all good. You're all good, Massalatov. You're a okay. Raid. G. Raid. 
There we go. There we go. Now I gotta get ready and get ready for work. You guys have been amazing. Don't think otherwise. Stay sweet and stay positive out there. You know I'll see you later. And you guys have an amazing day. I'm sorry that I could not stay longer. But you guys, tell them, say hey, and uh, tell them that you're awesome. And also, thank you. I'll try to have a good day at work now, like you. You have a good day. You have a good day doing your university. I believe in you. Bye bye, guys. Uh, we will try. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.